Thank you for taking the time to view this video, and I hope you find it informative. My name is Dr. Theodore Dick Tabin. I'm a double board certified plastic surgeon here in New York City with over 30 years of experience. I'm on staff at Lenox Hill Hospital and Manhattan Eye, Ear, and Throat Hospital, which are hospitals that are recognized nationally and internationally for the expertise of plastic surgery. I'm also on the Medical Advisory Board of Bella NYC, and I have enjoyed their enthusiastic support and organization during my time with them. What I'd like to talk to you today is about breast augmentation surgery, a very, very popular procedure for women. Who are the candidates? Number one, women who've had small breasts with lack of development. Number two, women who've lost a lot of weight and there's been like a deflationary component to their breast. And number three, women with the changes of pregnancy with and without breastfeeding. The approach to the surgery can be one of three ways. You can get the implant in either from a fold under the breast or the pigmented part, which is called the areolar, and also a third way is the undersurface of the armpit or axilla. Depending on your characteristics of your breast size and shape, my preference is to do a scarless breast augmentation using the incision under the armpit. But through any of those three incisions, one can place a saline or silicone implant under the muscle. The reason most people put it under the muscle, including myself, is that the shape and size looks more natural and the implants tend to have a softer, smoother consistency. There are many advantages and disadvantages to saline and silicone, and those characteristics are more commonly discussed during the consultation when I can customize which implant is most suitable for you. The recovery is relatively straightforward. There's going to be some soreness in the beginning because you're placing an implant under the muscle, but the long-term benefits of going under the muscle far outweigh any of those initial discomfort days. One other aspect of the implants that people have a misconception about is that saline and silicone implants, the actual shell of the implant is exactly the same. The only difference is one's filled with saline and the other one's going to be filled with silicone. I welcome you for a consultation at your convenience. Once I take your medical history, examine you, and we have a lengthy discussion, we will be able to come up with a treatment plan that you should find suitable. Please contact my office at your convenience, either by phone, email, or the website. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you sometime in the near future.